Hello, my name is the Renegade Gamer, and uh, so today we're reviewing um, Batman and Harley Quinn. Um, now, I'm a big fan of the DC, uh, DCAU, um, inter, you know, their animated universe. Um, I gotta say that uh, this film here is um, not one of my favorites, but I did like it. <laughs> I, I know that this film has been getting uh, crucified across the internet for a lot of different reasons. I understand their reasoning. But I looked at it like this. Uh, this film here is a comedy. It's a raunchy comedy. And that's it. <laughs> um, there's not a lot going on there. There's not a lot of discussion you can really have uh, as far as character uh progression or anything of that sort. It's just a raunchy comedy. But, you know, I mean, a lot of people were getting upset because of uh, some of the stuff that's in it. And uh, to some degree, I guess I can understand that. But uh, one of the things we always got to remember about uh, the character of Harley Quinn is the fact that she is... Well, I mean, uh, she is a sex symbol. A. B. She is a villain most of the time, sometimes, and then other times she's kind of an anti, almost an anti-hero. Um, so, a lot of the things they did in the film, I, it just, it, it, to me it made sense what happened. I was like, okay, this is a comedy, you know, I, I'm willing to run with it. And for a comedy, I liked it. But I know, like I said, I know where the criticisms are a lot. Uh, the criticisms, if you haven't seen the movie, spoilers. Um, the criticisms, of course, are with uh, the fact that she and Nightwing have sex. <laughs> Which, by the way, that's not the only person Nightwing's ever had sex with. Nightwing's been around the block quite a few times with a lot of different, uh, um, a lot of different uh, females <laughs> that are both superheroes and, in some cases, supervillains. I mean, he had sex with the Huntress, uh, Raven. Uh, He's been around the block a few times, my point. So that didn't really surprise me that much. Um, the two dance sequences is another thing I see a lot of people complain about. Or, or sorry, the two song sequences, because they're right back to back. Uh, I will admit that that scene is a little bit too long, but there's a lot of... Uh, if, you, if you watch the old uh, DC uh, Batman show, there's a lot of... Um, Almost every character in that in, in that club is basically henchmen from from one an episode. Uh, you have uh, the two pair uh, two faces henchmen who are the twins singing. Um, Falcone's uh, woman in from Bane, uh, the episode with Bane. Uh, I want to say the man who. Uh, uh, killed Batman was in it as well. My point is that well, almost every character in there was a character from uh, one of the older, from the old show. Now, I, I like that fact. I, I thought it was cool. I thought it was kind of funny that uh, you know they have this club that's where all the henchmen go, and it was actually the henchmen from the TV show. I thought that was kind of cool. Um, but you know, like I said, I, I understand where the criticisms comes from this film. Um, but, uh, there are some parts in it, I think, that actually, uh, are a little better than what, uh, people are, are saying. Um, and I do think that it could have did a, a little bit more with the film. For instance, when we first run into Harley Quinn, she's working as a waitress. Uh, Nightwing confronts her, and she basically tells him, she's, he's like, you could have got a job as a psychiatrist, you have, uh, you, you, you know, you know what you're talking about, and uh, she basically uh, snaps at him, rightfully so, uh, you know, she did apply, she got denied, but she's got a lot of offers, and most of them are for, like, porno shots and stuff like that. I kind of wish they would have went a little bit more into that, uh, to be honest with you, I'm, I'm not saying going through the more sexual parts of it, just how downtrodden she was, that, and they could have really made a character progression from it. 
but uh, they kind of did. <laughs> um, but I thought it was a decent scene there. Uh, of course, she gets in a fight with him afterwards. Now, there's something I want to talk about as well. The animation of the film. Um, it seemed a little bit choppy in areas. Um, there's a scene where Batman is talking to the guy with the uh, with a cybernetic arm. And he's just set. It, it looks like uh, it reminded me a lot of like old stock footage, where you're just sitting here like this, and your mouse moving, but there's no animation going on other than that. It looked kind of cheap in a way in that area. The fight scenes themselves, they were fine, but they looked they they had a little bit of a choppy look to them too. I I don't, I don't know what went wrong here. It may just be that I've watched so many so much animation over the years. I can kind of point it out. Maybe your layman can, but um, there was a little bit of an issue. Musical wise, I, I thought the music was actually kind of fun. Um, so uh, yeah, it was just a fun soundtrack. I, I like the opening uh, where they had Harley Quinn running around chasing Batman and Nightwing, or while they were chasing him. Her and it kind of set the, to the tone for the film. Unfortunately, the movie itself, the tone kind of goes, Woo! This is happy-go-lucky and everything else. And all of a sudden, it's like, this is dark and depressing. <laughs> and then it goes back to, Woo! And you're like, um, it is, it's having massive tonal shifts throughout the film. Um, I mean, there's a scene where uh, a man is dying. And Harley, it, it's actually a sweet scene. Uh, Man's dying, and uh, Harley's like, Batman's here, he can help you. And he goes, he, he's trying, but he, he can't do it. And she finally tells him, he's like, uh, when you get to heaven, meet up with my uh, aunt, Quinn. Uh, sh she'll take care of you from there. And it was a really sweet scene, is my point. Uh, there, there, like, that's that, that's kind of what I'm getting at here. That, yes, the movie's kind of a train wreck. <laughs> But there are scenes here that are actually good in the film. Um, you know, and there's a lot of stuff in this Batman movie that I didn't think I'd actually ever see. I didn't think I'd see a, a fart joke in the Batmobile. <laughs> um, and I, I actually laughed quite a bit because I thought it was humorous, <laughs> uh, the reactions from it. But, um, you know, like I said, if you're into raunchy humor, you might be into that more. But uh, I can understand completely if you're a uh, comic book fan or a uh, fan of the DCAU, you may not enjoy that. I, I do understand that. Um, but anyway, uh, <laughs> so uh, we have Poison Ivy and the Pharaonic Man, or Pharaonic, uh, for, yeah, Pharaonic Man. And, uh, I want to make sure I got his name right. So we had these two, and they had a, the uh, idea of basically turning everybody into plant people uh, through this formula by, by mixing it into swamp water in Louisiana and spreading it throughout the world. However, if the calculations of it was completely off, it would completely eradicate everything plant, animal, and human. Um, yeah, I, 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 now the Pharaonic Man, I can understand his point of view at least. I have no clue why Ivy went into this ideal exactly, because, uh, well, her stick is uh, plants. If it has even an option of getting rid of all the plants, I don't think she'd really take it. And it's kind of shown throughout the movie that she's not 100% into this. Um, and, of course, Harley's the one that, gets, that talks her out of it. <clears throat> so, I mean, there are things here that are not that bad. There's also some really strange things in this film. Uh, we literally have a scene where um, the cops are looking for both the Pharaonic Man and Harley, and, uh, sorry, the Pharaonic Man and Poison Ivy, and he pulls this yam out that he said he got from Swamp Thing. And they eat it, and I swear it looks like they're 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 higher than hell. <laughs> I mean, I mean that's the illusion you got is it's like, 
I mean, Ivy looks like she's like fucking completely out of it after she's because she's got this really dazed look on her face. And uh, they walk into the tree and disappear. Now, I'm, I, I freely admit, I'm not huge on the lore of Swamp Thing. And I, I do know a little bit about it. I know about the green area, but I was unaware that this stuff could make you high that came off of him and could uh, make you literally phase into a tree uh, into another location. I was unaware of that. But uh, apparently that's the thing. <laughs> Uh, this movie really reminds me a lot of uh, the 1960s show in a lot of ways. Uh, it really goes for that uh, a lot of obvious humor, uh, a lot what a lot of people would call low brown, low hanging humor, and uh, I disagree uh, <laughs> because there's a lot of laymen out there that actually enjoy this kind of stuff, and that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. You know, you got a lot of critics out there with a stick up their ass, and they don't want to, you know, they're like, oh, if it ain't the common take what I think, then fuck it. I don't like it. And uh, I'm more of the guy that's just like, eh, it's fine. <laughs> you know, I mean, he'll hit the stick. He'll hit, he'll hit them. He'll have an audience, you know. But I do question about uh, exactly who the film is made for, if I'm being honest with you. Because uh, this is a comic book movie. I mean, it is. Uh, it's uh, made from the old style of uh, the Batman show. So you have a lot of people that were a fan of the Batman show. You got a lot of comic fans that are fans of Batman. A lot of fans that are just fans of Harley Quinn. And yet this movie's kind of all over the place. Uh, which I, I've heard some interpretations that maybe it's from just Harley Quinn telling the story this all this story um you know it's from her point of view and i yeah i guess it would kind of match up with a lot of inconsistencies that uh that occurred throughout the film but um i don't know like i said i did like it it's like it's nowhere near my favorite of the bunch but it was it was interesting to watch and uh, it was fun so i i can't say that but let's talk about the ending for a second I've heard a lot of people complain about the ending. Uh, the ending reminded me a lot of an older film, uh, Monty Python The Holy Grail. Now, if you've never seen that movie, you should watch it. It's, it's hilarious. But the ending, it literally ends abruptly. Now, the reason that happened is because they ran out of money, and they literally couldn't film anymore. This movie kind of ends the same way. It just ends suddenly and abruptly. <laughs> And then you have uh, two scenes afterwards. You have a scene where the Ferrant man's running on fire, which is actually kind of humorous. Um, and then you have uh, this long, almost five-minute sequence at the end uh, where Harley Quinn's got a, a psychiatrist show. It's it's humorous, but the gag plays out a little bit too long. I will admit that freely. The gag does play out too long there. But a lot of the interactions between uh, Batman, Nightwing, and Harley Quinn, it's just fun. I, I, I thought it was it was really well done. You had Batman basically being the straight man, um, you know, and Harley Quinn, you know, is basically being Harley Quinn, you know, crazy as hell. Um, and Nightwing, I would say Nightwing was supposed to be kind of a part of the audience, um, you know, the audience's point of view in that area. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I mean, it was just funny to see them play off each other. I, I liked it. Um, there was a lot of gags of Batman. I liked this. Uh, she's singing up there uh, uh, something about a telephone line or something. And you look over there and Batman's just tapping his finger <laughs> on the table and uh, he's got his knee going a little bit. Rob looks at him and then he, he kind of looks and he stops and just goes like this instead. <laughs> Uh, it's, just, it's just little small stuff like that. I, I found really, uh, really humorous in the movie. Um, the things that it does well, it's okay. You know, I mean, it does all right. When it misses the mark, it misses the mark badly. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I mean, I, would I say buy this film? Probably not. Uh, I would say rent it. Is it disappointing? Uh, if you look at it, if you're looking for a raunchy comedy that dealing with superheroes, it's worth your time. And you definitely won't be bored for for, 77, for about 78 minutes. Uh, but uh, I don't know if I'd say it's uh, 
really worth your cash, though. I will talk about, I want to talk about a couple other things, though, before I, I shift this off. I know I've been yakking for about 15 minutes. Um, so, we got uh, Conway back. We have uh, Lester, Lester, uh, shit, I can't remember. Lester Lauren, I think's his name. The guy, Robin. Um, or, sorry, Nightwing. Uh, and then we have uh, Melissa Ronch playing Harley Quinn. Um, I gotta be honest about this. <clears throat> Kevin Conway did an excellent job. Lester was really good at the role of Nightwing. Melissa, it took me about 10 to 15 minutes to really get acquainted to what she was doing with Harley Quinn. And I didn't think she was doing a bad job. This is a very, very weird take on the character. Um, it really, I, I just had to kind of sit there and uh, I was like, she kind of sounds like her, but she doesn't sound like her. I was like, I don't know. I know you can't get Arlene Sorkin back. That's, I understand that. Tara Strong was playing her for a long time. I don't really understand why you didn't go with her. But I mean, Melissa Ranch, I think she does a fine job. It's just not exactly uh, what I'm accustomed to hearing. Um, it, it, it's just a small complaint. Um, you know, I, I, I've been watching these, I, I've been watching the, the, the DC animated movies and DC uh, shows for over 20 years, so I've got kind of an idea of how Harley Quinn sounds, and um, when she doesn't sound right, I, I notice it immediately. Uh, <laughs> but, um, you know, like I said, I did get acquainted to her. I do think she did a pretty good job. I, I did like her take on it. <coughs> um... Also, the woman, that, I don't remember her name, but the woman that played uh, Poison Ivy, I think she did a really good job. Uh, she, I think she did the best she could with uh, what she was given. Uh, but, you know, I mean, it was okay. I, I liked it. But overall, um, if you're looking for a score, which I'm trying to get out of it, because honestly, you don't really need a score. But if you want one... I would say it's probably a 2.5 out of 5. I mean, it's fun, um, but it's not good. <laughs> it's just fun. Um, but I am interested in their next film they got coming out. We have the uh, Batman, uh, sorry, Gotham by Gaslight, which is set in the uh, late 1800s. Um, and uh, I think it's, yeah, it's set in the late 1800s and still with Jack the Ripper. Um, I don't know, it looks interesting. I, I would like to see I never got to read that one, so um, this would be interesting. I, I admit it's, it's, a, it's a story I don't know. And I'm always up for watching something I don't know. I mean, it's just awesome. <laughs> but yeah, so uh, as far as Batman and Harley Quinn, I, uh, I would say pass. Don't, don't spend your money on it. But, uh, you know, if you catch it for free or if you got a Netflix or you got a buddy that's got it or something like that, yeah, give it a watch. You know, you may have fun with it. Just remember, it's a raunchy comedy. And go into it expecting that. You probably at least have a fun time. You don't know it's a bad movie, but you have a fun time. <laughs> Just don't go into it as like, oh, that is so low brown humor that I don't think I agree with it. I like it as much. Yeah, you know, just go in there and just have fun. I mean, yeah, it's a fucking movie. <laughs> no reason to get your panties in the water. Anyway, I'm Marina Gay. Y'all take it easy. I'll catch you in the next one.